five years ago, me and Luke stepped onto this land and we just knew it was meant for us. We had no idea what obstacles would get in our way or how hard we would have to work to keep our dream going. But we knew we were ready, ready for this new life, ready to learn the off-grid way and ready to call Portugal our home. Hi, I'm speaking to you all as friends because a lot of you are. We have been going for three years now. But for those of you who are new to our channel, we are Sara and Luke. We are a couple of Maltesers from Malta living in Portugal. And this new adventure started around six years ago. We had a thriving food truck in Malta, but our quality of life was pretty low. And then Luke asked me a question that changed everything. If you die tomorrow, are you happy with today? And my answer was no. So we sold everything and started this new adventure. We really had no idea what we wanted to do or where we wanted to end up. So with a backpack and a bank account, we left our home country and flew to the USA. We just needed to walk and clear our heads. And so we did. We went on a very, very, very long walk. We started the PCT, which is the Pacific Crest Trail, and it takes you from the Mexican border all the way to Canada if you do the whole thing. We were walking for days on end, sometimes 12 to 14 hour days. We enjoyed the whole experience from the very little things to the huge ones meeting lovely people, seeing beautiful countryside and pushing our bodies to the limit. While walking, the only thing we had on our minds was, will we find water before our supply finishes? And where are we going to resupply for food? Mm -hmm. Looks mean sandwich. Oh yeah. Looks doing his magic. But what was also on our mind was, what did we want to do with the next chapter of our lives? Where did we want to go next? Did we want to finally settle down? So we walked, and we walked, and we walked. And as we walked, things became so much clearer. On our travels, we always looked for the same things. We always wanted to go on beautiful hikes. We wanted to be in nature. We wanted animals around us. So this is what we wanted for our future. But the destination, we didn't decide then. We decided that at 3 a.m. in the morning in Mexico. But that's another story for another day. And right now I'm writing a blog about it on our newly opened website. So if you want to check that out, I will leave it in the description below. Good morning. It's time to put the bed down. So 
So just weeks after that decision, we flew to Portugal and we never left. When we arrived, we didn't just pick a place and move here. We drove around Portugal in search for the ideal land, the ideal spot, and most importantly, the most affordable one. And that got us to Castelo Branco. It took us less than two months from when we dreamt the dream to find this amazing place, which we now call home. It was much bigger than we wanted, for sure. We were looking for something between one to two hectares of land. You know, something small, something manageable. But we decided on 17 hectares of wild, bushy, untamed, awesome land with huge boulders, wild walks, and bordering 400 meters of river. There was no doubt in our mind that this was our spot. And then there were the ruins. The main ruin used to be an old cheese factory, but had been abandoned for 40 years and left to become totally overgrown and wild. With no jobs and only our savings, we did have to be careful. And we were trying to look for land under 30,000 euros, but we bought this piece of land for 58,000. With not enough savings to renovate the ruins, but when you want something so badly, you just have to take the risk. When we got to the land, there was nothing. And when I say nothing, I mean a sketchy access road, to say the least, no water, no electricity, and everywhere was overgrown. So we cleared a spot to park our caravan, and then we got a dog. We had been wanting a puppy for a long time now, but Luke and I had just never settled anywhere, so it was never the right time. But after buying this piece of land in Portugal, I think we're finally setting our roots. So it was definitely time to get a dog. And we got Molly. She was thrown in the dustbin at just two days old and we took her at just two weeks old. So it was a huge learning experience for us. We had never had a dog together and never one this young either. So we have made a few mistakes on the way, but she has grown up to be a very clever girl. She has a few problems, but on the whole, she is amazing. absolutely nothing about this new life. We had traveled, yes, camped a lot of places and lived pretty simply. But this was different. This was now a way of life for us, not a holiday that will end and life will get back to normal. So we took everything one step at a time, learning a few new things a day, just so our heads don't explode. When it rained, another joy of our caravan was that it was leaking from everywhere. It was falling to bits. Wow. Molly, a first thunderstorm, Koopa. So good. Very deadly, you say. Once we had our garden going and we had running water and we felt settled, we got news that we were going to have visitors to our land and we had nowhere to put them, so we decided to get a bell tent. And once that bell tent was up and it looked beautiful, we decided to go down to Morta to collect our belongings with our puppy, Molly. 
On the way to Malta, the four days it took us, we just slept in the boot of the car. On the way back from Malta, our car was chock a block. So we needed to stay in hotels. And that was a really good experience for Molly. She absolutely loved it. She'd run into the hotel room, jump on the bed, smiling from ear to ear, checking out all the cupboards. It was so nice seeing her enjoy all the new places she was experiencing. <laughs> She's loving it. <laughs> When we got back to our land that we missed so very much, we decided no more noisy generator and we upgraded to solar. That is the north to, north to south. So you need to face your, your solar panels to south, that direction. Around August, September, we had so much food growing in our gardens. It looked amazing. And harvesting all these amazing vegetables made us really, really proud of how much we had already achieved. Of course, you can't have a beautiful piece of land and not enjoy it thoroughly. So we spent some really good days walking, exploring, and just seeing what we have. And while we're doing that, clearing some parts to make it easier for us for the next time. We were just so happy with our land. I still can't believe it till today. I go out and I look around and think, wow, this is ours. But there was one thing we were not happy with, and that was our home. This caravan that was falling apart by the day. There were some extremely hard days to get through, and sometimes we thought, what have we done? How will we ever cope? Will we ever manage to get to where we're heading? But whenever we felt like that and we got that overwhelming feeling of maybe dread, we would just walk to the top of the hill, look around our land, see all the beauty that surrounds us, hear the birds singing, see that magnificent view next to the huge ruin. And we just know that this is where we are meant to be. Living in the country, in nature, surrounded by wildlife and animals, clean air, a slower pace of life no light pollution, so amazing starry nights every night. There's just nothing else like it. Ah, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm working on year two as we speak, and I will leave you with these words of advice. Don't hurry life, you only get the one. Decide what you want to do and go for it. But most importantly, enjoy it. It's a learning process and it will be hard, but take everything with a pinch of salt because it will get better. You will have to take risks. Some things may not work out. You might find out that it's not even for you. It's not what you wanted in the first place. But how will you know unless you go for it? I really hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making this. I loved going down memory lane. I only wish I had more footage, but we didn't have YouTube and hardly used a camera back then. I will also like to thank our patrons because without you guys we wouldn't have made it here. And speaking about our patrons, I would like to welcome Norma Beth, Leanne and Deborah and Nina to our Patreon and channel member family. Thank you so much for your support. It is greatly appreciated. And if any of you guys would like to support us, the link is in the description below. And you get a bit of an extra look into our lives. So thank you guys for watching and have an awesome day.